I was the work monk uh, last year, one of my least favorite things was during the meeting, one of the monks, I changed the, the plan I had for something in, in some certain way. And so I had to, I didn't always receive it uh, as easily as Tan Sampano, but that was part of the, uh, the job is, you know, there were these plans and then they just needed to be able to be flexible. But the mind isn't always ready for that. So for myself, I could, I could sense that tension when things had to change. And sometimes they had to change drastically. I'd have to drop a whole project for the day. And so in the monastery, this happens all the time when we're, we're having to work with other people. We have plans for how something is going to be, kind of a whole plan for how our day is going to be. We think about the people we work with, the people we interact with, and we can have a certain expectation of what that's going to be like. Sometimes this can also move into an expectation of how people behave, how they should be. Or, for example, what's, what's proper in a monastery. How people should walk, how they should talk, what they should do, how they should do it. So we might, we might have an example of right speech and think of like right speech. If one is really following it to an expected degree or what our own expectations would be, most everyone would be silent all the time. That's an expectation, isn't it? And when we want others to be a particular way, then we, we will suffer as we might get into a situation of wanting to control, wanting to create that situation that we, we think should play out in a particular way. So we might actually tell other people, you should speak like this or you shouldn't speak like that, you should speak less, you shouldn't speak so harshly or you should make sure of that you're speaking in the way that I want you to. Or you're not doing the right thing, you should be doing it differently. How I think it should be. And oftentimes the how I think it should be is justified in a way of thinking, well, it's the, it's the way of the monastery, this is how we do things here. We call this a monastery etiquette. If you don't know what you're doing, you're not falling in line with other people, so you're being the disharmonious one. And so we can push our views on others. And what that tends to do is it creates a very tight experience. It's not just a container, it becomes a container where the walls are moving inward. And we can feel very pressed. And it can be quite unpleasant. When I was uh, about a three or four Vasa monk, one of the monks had, had actually been a monk before, and, and I saw he wasn't following a particular rule. And I observed this over a few days, and I observed each day that I was getting more irritated seeing this. One of the reasons was I thought, well, I'm following this rule. So is everybody else here, he's not following it. Unfortunately, when I went up to him to tell him about it on the third or fourth day or after a week of it, it didn't come out so nicely. It was a very simple rule. We were supposed to be with our, our robes during a period of transition of dawn, and everybody kind of carries their robe around in a particular way at this time of year. But this monk wasn't doing it. And he just, he just didn't understand. He didn't... He didn't know how it was done. And of course that was perfectly normal. He had gone from being a samanera to a bhikkhu. Samaneras didn't have that particular rule. And perhaps in his monastery it was practiced differently or before he didn't know. But what came out was this very extenuating reverberation within. 
because it wasn't coming from just wanting him to um, to know something or to be aware of something. It was coming from a sense of wrongness. You're doing the wrong thing. And in my mind, he was doing it intentionally. He knew what he should be doing. I already waited a week. It's long enough. And so, you know, it didn't didn't set the tone. Probably took a month to work through that. So we have to be really aware of when we really wish for people to behave in a certain way or do something or moderate their speech. We're not really looking at our own intention and how it is that we're actually speaking to people. And that's the irony of of it. One might go to correct somebody else's speech and the speech that is done to correct that other person is so much more unbeautiful than what we were trying to correct in the first place. Even that word correct or to, to um, moderate or to change, it's, it's this sense of control. And so a monastery isn't, it would be a mistake to believe that it's a place where people live and they all are supposed to fall in line and behave perfectly. If that was the case, everyone here would be enlightened. So it takes time, it takes a lot of uh, practice and patience. We're patient with other people's quirks, foibles, their things, but we're also acknowledging our own. We're seeing uh, where we're coming from. Asking ourselves, oh, do I, do I also make these similar mistakes? Or if they're not the same, are they just different uh, ways that I'm not seeing or that are faults within myself? And so most, most of the time we're really trying to focus on ourselves. In fact, in our tradition, I, I think it, it's a, a Thai saying. It's a sort of worked out percentage around 95% of the time you should be focusing on your own behavior. And just 5% are you noticing others. But we just went over the rules in our Vinaya class the other night around this. And when you speak to somebody else, you really have to be very careful about what you're saying when you're you're wanting to let them know there's something that they aren't seeing or something you want to give them feedback about. The main thing is to really understand are you coming from a sense of goodwill, of wishing that person well? And if that's not there, then you don't say it. You also have to work out time and place, appropriateness, all kinds of things. So most of the time, it's not really what we're doing here in the monastery, informing people about how they need to improve. It's a place around where we inform ourselves how we need to improve. And so any time there is that intention to talk to somebody else about what we think they're doing wrong, or what it might be, we really need to try to restrain that and hone that in and, and bring it in and say, well, also, how am, I, how am I at fault in the same way? But really also ask ourselves, is it that much of a problem? Is it really worth saying? Is it necessary? Is it something they might learn on their own? Can they pick it up on their own? If it's something that I don't do, can I just inform them by just not saying anything and perhaps they'll pick it up from me? Or other people here? So it's really a a time of patience when we have that inclination. We want to give others space. When we give others space, there isn't that sense of constriction and the walls coming in. And people do have a sense of noticing and picking things up in a much more genuine and easy way. So that should be the intention in the mind is how can I give space here? How can I allow others to grow without feeling like I need to tell them that they have to grow? I'm going to go out with a couple of the guests here and we're going to plant some plants and it's not like we're going to jam these plants in the ground and beat them left and right and shake them and say, grow, grow. Or pour, you know, 10 gallons of water on them and scream at them. What's wrong with you? 
So instead, it's just it's just cultivating that sense of gentleness, kindness. Often people are coming to the monastery, they're just like these plants. We're just giving them space to grow, putting them in the place we think that is well protected for them, giving them just enough water, not too much, not too little either. Thinking maybe they need the right shade in this particular spot or in this particular soil. We do that because each plant is individual and each one needs a different type of attention. So as you go throughout your day, throughout your week, throughout your years living, just kind of think about the other people you're living with and how best to support them, to care for them, to help them grow, to allow for that space and peace and kindness so that the roots can grow deep and firm and strong. And people can understand the Dhamma from a place that doesn't need to be defended.